Hello everybody, it's me. How you doing? Um, I want to do a first impressions video of the game Double DMC Double Micro High. And first thing I want to tell you is I really like this game a lot. It's not even in here, you know. It's still in the Xbox, and I like it that much that I left it in there because I like playing it. I'm probably gonna continue playing on either later tonight or tomorrow morning. And for the record, no, I didn't take the instruction booklet out. This didn't come with an instruction booklet. I don't know why it didn't. Um. But really, I shouldn't be surprised because nowadays instruction booklets are kind of nothing. Like, I have the Dead Island one here. Uh, look at how bland these things have become. Like, I remember being younger and them being cool. I even have Mr. Quest, Final Fantasy Mr. Quest. Fun game for what it is. And I was kind of thinking about it. And just look at all these. Look how colorful these instruction booklets used to be. You used to have like really cool artwork in it. Get it. Actually, you'd actually like to read them because they'd actually have keep you interested with all the cool pictures and color and stuff like that. Yeah, see, look at that. They actually put time and detail into these. But nowadays, it seems like they don't really care about the instruction booklet. I don't know when it started happening, but when the instruction book was started becoming more dull, but I know with, especially with this new console generation, the one that we're in right now, not the Wii U's, the, not the Wii U console generation, the one that we're in right now, um, the Xbox 360 and PS3, Wii 360 and PS3's generation, though we use the next step up, but it's, I also think it's with this one, it may have been the one before it where you know, instruction booklets become became more stale, and I actually looked at more of my games, and this is Fear Three, right? It's not even an instruction booklet; it's two pages, and there's no instructions about how to play the game. I know how to play the game; it's F FPS. But come on, I guess they gotta give you save all your rooms, save all the rooms for their stupid ads for Xbox Live and Zune Network that no one fracking uses. But anyways, that's enough about that rant. Back to DMC Devil May Cry. This is actually a really fun game. I was really surprised. You know, Dante, he goes kind of looks silly. But one thing you have to know is that this isn't Dante from Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3. I was going to bring up the my old Devil May Cry games. But I figured, eh, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to show you this. Like, Dante used to be a little bit bigger he wasn't that skinny, he used to be a bit buffer, and he used to have long white hair. They actually kind of make a joke about it early in the game. And he's not as quirky as he was in the first few. Anyways, this game, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the combat is definitely different. It's same, but different, if that makes any sense. Like, there's no lock-on feature, which kind of bugs me out, because... I'm I used to I'm used to the the old Devil May Cry games so I I'll press a trigger and I'll lock onto something. What happens is you'll press a trigger and your sword rebellion, it's still called rebellion, and it turns into either the right trigger, it turns into the demon weapon, the like a big axe, a slow axe. Or you press the left trigger and it turns into a sickle, an angelic sickle, which is the faster weapon, and then you know, rebellion's right in between. And there are some enemies that can only be harmed by you know, uh, the axe, the demon's axe, or the scythe. So there's kind of some strategy in there, but it kind of geeks me out because I'm not used to, you know, pressing the trigger buttons in a third-person action game and it's switching my weapons and I'm still pressing buttons. There's an auto-lock feature, which it does, but it's not as reliable as it should be because especially when you're in the challenge rooms, you'll wind up shooting or whipping. Like, if later, at a certain point in the game, you get, like, a whip in. Like, you can either bring enemies towards you or you can bring yourself toward them. The demon one brings them towards you. Angelic one, you go towards them. And you'll wind up be trying to grab someone else, but it grabs someone else. Uh, and... The demon whip, though, is useful for, you know, grabbing 
enemies with shields, like it pulls their shield away from them so you can get in shots, which is, that's very useful. Um, but yeah, they really should have spent more time working on that, like, even with like, if you could, even, even if you could like press a trigger, not trigger on, um, well the analog sticks down, and then it like picks it out for you. Or I would have preferred like, you know, cycling through weapons like you did in the previous Double May Cry games, I would have liked that. Uh, there's no m more like class systems in this, there's no trickster, gunslinger, swordsman, royal guard, I think royal guard was in DMC4. There's not that anymore, it's just, you're just Dante and you just swing your sword around a bunch. And the leveling up system, or the upgrade system in this, is kind of different. Like, you get essentially experience points, and once you're ex the experience circle, like, it's, a, it's shown by a little circle. It, like, will go all the way around and you'll get one upgrade point. And then you go to a little shrine and you pick from a list for your abilities, your swords, your scythe, your axe, or your guns. Ebony and Ivory. Yes, they're still called Ebony and Ivory. Um, you go through that, and you pick out what upgrade you want to do. And at any point in the game, well, as long as you're on one of these shrines anyway, you can take a thing off and then move it to somewhere else. Like, it doesn't cost you any blood orbs or anything like that. This made in Mexico. Nice to know. Yeah. Nice for them to put this right on the plastic. Is it on the plastic? Yeah. Seems so out of place. Sorry, attention span is short. Anyways, the plot of this game. Now, one thing I can say about this game's plot is if you. It's very. Very. <coughs> excuse me. Very similar to the movie They Live. Or that one movie that came out recently, Branded. Have you seen Branded? It's weird. If you haven't seen Branded, don't worry about it. It's not that good, but it has some. It's really trippy. Anyways, um. It's like, you're Dante, you're a demon hunter. You're not the Dante from the previous Devil May, Cry game, Devil May Cry games. This is a different Dante altogether. This is another Dante. This isn't the same Dante we've been playing as. So, just heads up on that. You're not half human, half demon. You're half angel, half demon. And they refer to that as a Nephilim, even though that's not... I don't think that is a Nephilim. I think a Nephilim... I, they're technically Nephilims, but whatever. I'm not going to go into that. But, and your brother, your twin brother, Virgil, he is a part of this group that's supposed to be fighting back against this corporation run by the head demon, Mundus. Yes, the same Moon, technically the same Mundus from the previous Double May Cry games, but it's also not... Um... Yeah, like, this is just a reboot entirely. It's not a prequel to the previous ones. Even though they kind of, they were... I remember they were building it up as the game that took place before Devil May Cry 3. Which kind of bugs me out because I'm playing it and they keep making references and stuff like that. I'm just like... I know this isn't... Devil May Cry. This is DMC, not Devil May Cry. Um, and that's kind of... Trip, that kind of trips me out every once in a while. But you you can't get over it because the combat is fun enough to kind of forget to forget about it. Now, when you're playing through the game, there's like all like when you're in combat, you're not in combat in the real world like you were in previous Double May Cry games. You're in, you're only in combat when you're in limbo, at least from what I've played so far. I haven't beaten this game yet. And limbo is very trippy. That's where all the demons come out. That's where you can see how the world is actually supposed to be sort of similar to like you know the glasses in They Live, pretty much, or that weird things that they did in the movie Branded. Um, yeah, you go into Limbo and you see how this world actually is supposed to look because it's being run by demons. Like, cameras are actually eyeballs. The soda's actually, like, mutant gunk or whatever. And you have to put stop to it. So it's a very dystopian game. It's not, like, it's not the plot of Dante's a demon hunter and he's just there to kill him. No, this plot is a lot deeper and the, than the other ones, but it, at the same time, it trips me out because I'm not used to Devil May Cry having that deep of a plot. I think the deepest plot Devil May Cry ever had was in Devil May Cry 4, but my favorite is still going to be Devil May Cry 3 because it was just the most fun. I couldn't. I, that's probably the game I probably dumped the most hours into of any game I've played next to Star Fox 64. But 
this is still a worthy addition to your game collection. Um, one thing I can kind of I will say about though, like, is that I don't think this should have been called Devil May Cry or have anything to do with the Devil May Cry series because it's not Devil May Cry, and that's kind of the problem with rebooting game series as opposed to rebooting like a movie series, like. Rebooting a game series, it's like I've been playing with these characters for, like I've been playing Dante, at like this for this long, at with this story, but they come around and change it, to like this, for the reboot, and it kind of trips the mind out. It trips my mind out anyway. But honestly, if that's the biggest complaint I can have this game's next to the lock-on feature, then really, I guess it's saying something. Maybe they'll try and connect it with the previous, with the other Devil May Cry games. I would like, to, I would really appreciate it if they did, because I just, it doesn't feel like I'm playing Devil May Cry. It feels like I'm playing a spin-off of Devil May Cry or um, a spin-off of Bayonetta. But if you like hack and slash games. This is a game you should definitely pick up. It's a lot of fun. Um, the story is really cool, even if it is different from previous Devil May Cry incarnations and um, very reminiscent of They Live. But if you're a fan of They Live, this is definitely up your alley. Uh, definitely more of a dystopian story. The title is also a little weird. DMC, Devil May Cry. I know what DMC is initial and it's supposed to be initialing. But whatever. Oh, Virgil's also not a villain so far. He might be at a twist ending, but I haven't gotten that far in the game. Like I said, I might have already pointed that out. He's like the leader of the resistance, and Dante's helping him. Which is also really weird. Maybe at the end there'll be a bunch of twists that make it a tie-in with the other ones. I really hope so, because I really have a connection with those games. Like, they're some of my favorite games. Um, this one's actually in terms of difficulty, more like Devil May Cry 2, because I'm playing it on the hardest difficulty. It's really not that hard. <coughs> but it could be that I've been, I played through all the Devil May Cry games, and I'm just familiar with it, even, and Bayonetta. But Ninja Theory did a really good job at doing their reboot. Definitely pick it up if you get a chance to. Read it first, possibly, if you're questioning it. Um, or download the demo. The demo's free, obviously. Uh, yeah, there's not much more I can say about it. Rent it, download the demo, or just buy it if you if you want it. If you want it and you knew you wanted it, just pick it up. You'll you'll love it. Definitely worth adding it to your collection. I'm not disappointed that about it. Anyways, that's the my video review for DMC Double May Cry. Catch you later.